Hi, I'm Siobhan Butler, and I'm an Irish dancer. I don't really prescribe to the idea of Irish dance being any one particular thing. I usually think of it like an umbrella term. Because there's so many different perspectives and styles found in traditional dance from Ireland, it wouldn't necessarily be fair to say that any one is more Irish than the other. A lot of my dancing is improvised dancing, so kind of under the subcategory of Shenos dancing, which means old style in Irish. And this style is typically danced pretty close to the floor, so your feet aren't really lifting high off the ground. Um, and you're using all parts of your feet. So you're using the balls of your feet and your heels and the tips of your toes and everything. So um, it's a really wonderful form because even under that one subcategory of Shenno dancing, um, there's so many different regional styles and, and even personal styles as well. So your influences can kind of run the gamut. Um, and from that, you can really develop your own personal style because you can pull bits and pieces from lots of different places or different people. And that's exactly what I've done. I, I moved to Ireland in 2016 to do a master's in ethnochoreology. Ten points if you know what that means. I knew that I wanted to write my thesis on set dance battering from County Clare, which is this unique percussive stepping that is danced in the context of sets which are the group square dances that came from the continent over to Ireland back in the 18th century. Anytime I see or hear anything I like, I try to embody it. So my personal style took on a whole new twist when I moved here, and that's directly linked to the influences of this set dance battering style. kind of the running joke that I carry my instrument with me everywhere I go because I dance with my feet. But our shoes are so important for the types of sounds that we can achieve. I usually wear leather soles, but I just got these new shoes with aluminum taps and they're made by Soft Shoes in British Columbia. This next piece is a traditional set dance, which means there's specific choreography. This particular version of An Sushin Ban, or the White Blanket, is one of the oldest.
Hi everyone at Darlow Drum Festival and uh, welcome to Ennis. I'm in Glower Theatre at the moment in the foyer here. We're having a rehearsal for a couple of pieces that we're going to perform for you later on in this segment. Uh, my name is Nuala Kennedy and I'm playing with Siobhan who you met already and um, you'll already know that Siobhan is a wonderful step dancer. Uh, I play the flute and in Irish music um, we like to combine the rhythm of the, the music with the, the rhythm of the steps and sync it up together to create a piece. Well that's what we're going to be doing for you today. So the first one that we're going to play, um, the both of us, is a set of three reels and they're traditional pieces from the east coast of Ireland where I grew up. They're from an area called Oriel that was one of the old kingdoms of Ireland. Um, 200, for 200 years it was a, a centre and a mecca for musicians and artists and poets and also rich in the dance music. And so these three reels that we're going to play for you now are from that area. They were collected by Father Luke Donnellan in the late 1800s. He preserved a lot of the dance music, wrote it all down. And um, luckily, a friend of ours from Dundalk, Johnny Gallagher, came across that collection way back in the 80s, the 1980s, and gave it to a friend of mine, Jerry O'Connor. And Jerry, the fiddle player, O'Connor from Dundalk, published it last year in book form. So here we go with three reels from the Donlan collection. The first one is called The Louth Lasses, like myself. Here we go. I mean, I suppose like on a personal level, I'm very honored <laughs> to be included in the festival, but as a dancer, it's, um, 
it's it's really like validating, I guess is a good word. Um, you know, most percussive dancers consider themselves musicians, but we're kind of in this like weird middle ground of dance being on like a mainstream level, kind of being seen as only like a visual thing. And then the percussion element being musical. So we're kind of this weird bridge between both of these worlds. So it can feel a little funny sometimes how to describe ourselves, but, um, you know, oftentimes we're, we're more placed in the dance sort of, uh, box, I guess. So now being included in the musician box a bit more is, is really nice, <laughs> especially because so much of my, um, like experience as a dancer is kind of within the music world. I can't remember a time in my life when I didn't want to be a dancer. <laughs> um, I, but my sort of journey with Irish dance started when I was maybe like four or five and I saw river dance. It's like the classic story. You see the show and it's like, I'm that little girl dancing in front of the TV, like obsessed with it. So um, that kind of, uh, as soon as I saw that, I was like, that's exactly what I want to do. Um, but where we, we were living in, in central Florida at the time. So Irish dance wasn't really happening so much there. This is like the late nineties. Um, so we moved to Southern California where, um, uh, we lived maybe about 15 minutes away from an Irish dance school. And that's where I got started and we moved around a lot. So I can't really say I'm from any particular place in the States, but, um, I was able to train with about six different Irish step dance schools. And this was a, in a competitive context. So, um, it was rather insular, I guess, and, and separate from the music. Um, it was actually my mom who kind of started dragging me out to traditional sessions that were just with local musicians. Um, that was kind of my introduction into the music side of it all. Um, and it's, it's kind of strange to, to explain this. There's, <laughs> there's so much of a backstory when it comes to, uh, Irish dance, um, but there, there generally is a bit of a divide between the dance and the music, um, which is one of the reasons that I was really drawn to the style of dance that I currently perform, um, because it, it's kind of a bit more, again, a bit more of a bridge between those two worlds. Because it's improvised, you have to really be more mindful of the music, whereas if you're doing choreography-based movements, it's you're not really paying so much mind to, to the music, not to say that you're not paying any attention to the music at all, but um, there isn't quite that as much of a, a give and take between those two. So um, yeah, pretty much since I was like eight, you know, I've been involved in Irish dance and music in some capacity and it's, it's developed into this really rich relationship where so many of my really close friends are musicians um, I was just talking to my husband before I, I met my husband through this scene. Like it's, it's kind of amazing. I feel extremely privileged to be able to experience this and, and to be, have, have been given so many things through this scene and this art form and everything. <laughs> I always, I, I'm, I, I kind of joke that like, I'm, I'm kind of like a closeted percussionist <laughs> in that realm I love the idea of, of playing the drums and when I was in high school I, I joined um, my school band as a percussionist um, and they they put me on the kit a couple of times but they're like she's not she's not very good so they, they like kind of gave, put me in the back with like like a bass drum every <laughs> random beat because like I could at least keep a beat <laughs> but it's so funny like when it it's a completely different world when it comes to making rhythms with your feet and your hands I, I don't know, I guess I'm not that that handy. I'm better with my feet. <laughs> Again, it's like, I, it, it it's kind of something that I always knew that I wanted to do. Um, I suppose when I was a teenager, um, and to be perfectly honest, I've had kind of up and, ups and downs with my relationship with dance. You know, sometimes I've been absolutely obsessed and then other times I've been like, okay, I kind of want to focus on something else now. And and it kind of really hit home when I was a teenager. And that's kind of when I was considering like, you know, what I want to, what I want to be when I grew up. <laughs> um, and so I was, I was considering, you know, going to school for filmmaking. I wanted to be a painter. I, it was always kind of something creative. Um, but ultimately I just kind of kept falling back into dance and, um, you know, it's, it's my, my first love. <laughs> so kind of can't forget it. I even, um, when I was 18, I don't know if you can see this, but 
I even got a tattoo on my wrist. It says Rinka, which means dance in Irish. Um, so it's kind of like a, a little reminder for myself that like, because I, I do have those ups and downs, but I always fall back on dance. So it's, it's literally on my arm at this point. I, I, I can't not do it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've, I was, I was 18. Well, to be honest, I was, I was 13 when I started teaching kind of professionally. Um, I was living in a really rural, rural part of New Hampshire and they needed an Irish dance teacher to teach at the local dance school. So I was like, I'll do it. <laughs> and so some of my students, like a lot of my students were, were young kids, but some of them were around my age. So it was kind of funny to, to be in, um, that position of, you know, you, you, typically you think of a teacher as being somebody a bit more mature or at least older. <laughs> so it was kind of a, a funny thing, but it completely just kind of, um, reinvigorated my love of, of dance um, through teaching. And, and it's one of the reasons that I still teach. I, I really love being able to share um, what I know and and different stories with, with, with people from all over the place. <laughs> I guess as a, as a dancer, like my relationship to traditional music, um, just because that's typically the music that I, that I dance to, um, I, I don't, I never really thought of my, my dancing as being percussive necessarily in the sense that like I, and, and I'm probably doing like complete discredit to percussionists when I say this. So this is like totally showing that I'm not actually a, a musician here, but um, uh, this idea of like, like it's a, it's more of a supporting rhythm. Um, whereas I think my dancing, I've always tried to mirror the melody line so much and not to say that it's not rhythmic, but it's like, I'm, I'm, uh, up until like very recently, I've been trying to just kind of match the exact sort of notes that are going through, even though I don't have those tonal variations necessarily. Um, I've been trying to just kind of mirror what I'm hearing. Um, because again, like this, this concept of, of dance interpreting the music, it's, it's kind of like a new thing. Um, and and definitely this idea of, of mirroring the music in like a very precise way. So that that was kind of like my experimental phase for a long time. Um, I feel like I'm just kind of coming out of it now. I, I'm really excited about this idea of, of thinking of my dance more as like a drummer. So being able to kind of go in and out of following the melody line and then supporting it rhythmically. Um, but uh, it, this, this question is actually perfect timing because I was, I was kind of half joking when I suggested this to my husband, my, my husband plays the baron, which is the Irish drum. So he's, he's the percussionist of, of Irish music. Um, and I was kind of joking when I said it, but I was like, what if we do like, like a, a collaboration, you and me, you know, drum and feet. And, and he's like, yeah, yeah, we should do it. So <laughs> we'll see if we actually do it, but you might see an EP coming out soon. <laughs> I love being a representative of percussive, percussive dance. So I, I think it's, um, I hope if people didn't know about percussive dance already, then they know a little bit more about it. Um, but specifically Irish dance, you know, I think um, one of the things that I really love sharing because I've essentially committed my life to um, learning about all styles of Irish dance. Um, I, I'm really passionate about sharing all of the different sort of facets of the tradition that exist. Um, even though I, I typically only dance one sort of element of that, but I like to talk about all different styles. Cause I think, you know, if you say the words Irish dance, people kind of have this image that comes to mind of river dance type dance shows. It's very performative. It's, um, you know, flashy dresses and maybe curls and stuff like that. So, which is very much a part of, of that, but it's only one sort of element. So um, I hope, again, just to expand people's minds about <laughs> what Irish dance is. <laughs> That's a really hard question. Um, I think like kind of on like a personal sort of philosophy, you know, I, I, there, there's, again, there've been plenty of ups and downs in my life and, and things that I probably shouldn't have done or could have done better and things like that. But ultimately they've all gotten me to this point where I'm at now. So I, I don't really regret anything. Um, so I, I don't know if I would change a whole lot, but I think I would just be kind of kinder to myself, you know, and, and, um, maybe 
encourage myself to be a little bit more free with my own style and perspective. Um, you know, coming into a tradition essentially as an outsider, like I, from, from a, on a very superficial level, um, you know, I look very Irish. I have an Irish name. I grew up doing Irish dancing, but like, other than that, I have no connection to the culture really. It was completely random that I was given this name. I didn't know that I was ethnically Irish until maybe about seven years ago. <laughs> um, it's, it's just, it's kind of crazy how things have fallen into place. So I kind of think of myself as an outsider coming into this tradition. So it's, um, I think with that kind of in mind, I, I was trying to maybe copy a little bit too much of the stuff that I was seeing because I didn't want to um, disrespect you know, the tradition by coming in and being like, oh, what if we do this? What do we do this? Let's mix it up and try all this stuff. You know, I don't want to ruffle too many feathers. So um, I think if I were to go back, I would say, you know, what? it's OK. It's OK to ruffle a couple of feathers if, you know, you're being true to yourself and you'll always be an outsider and that's OK. You know, you don't have to try to fit in completely. It's you can be respectful and still be yourself. Hello everyone at Darlow Festival and welcome back to our second piece here. Myself and Siobhan are going to play a song from the Oriel region again and it's an Oriel version of the well-known Irish language drinking song, Neil Shin Law. Um, in Oriel we have a, a different kind of a version of it and I learned it from the great singer and song collector and academic Padraigine Nihula Khan. Um, and I loved this version that is from my own part of Ireland. So here we go with Hanil Shane Law. Here is so fun and tea is not a groom at all. Yeah. 